but there's a gentleman coming over here in a oh, suit no. and tie, but he's actually wearing shorts, which is rather strange. Well, that's a strange look, isn't it? He looks like something out of Tom Brown's school days. Well, he does. He does. Ladies and gentlemen. We're stuck in here. What we're going to do is... Um, Luckily, some of the residents, local residents, found out in the first episode that we were, unfortunately, in here for the whole season, yeah. uh, stuck in the score hut. Um, and they have been bringing us supplies over, haven't they? Which is very nice. We, very we nice. have to close this now. That's part of the law. That yeah. You're not allowed windows open after nine o'clock in the evening. And we're Certainly nearly there not. Now. Yeah, I mean, so it's... we have to shut this up. Um, and when we shut this up, Birdie's bed then falls down. Yeah. Doesn't it? Yeah. Um, into place, and um, mine is just over there in the corner. Mine's an upright bed, and um, yeah, we're here. And there has been some supplies, fortunately, because it was rather hot at the weekend. It was warm. It um, was warm. We need to do our ablutions and you know, tip out the toilet before we go to bed. And yes, we will find ourselves warm and cozy for another evening. Good, e <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, and welcome back to Hobley for episode two I like of... Hobley Cricket Club. It's a very friendly club, I isn't know. It? That's a nice little terminology, isn't yeah. it? You find us again, two men in the school box, and I think we're probably going to shorten the name. that. Yeah, shorten that to just in the school box, I think. No, it's stuck in the school hut. Stuck in the school hut. Stuck Sorry. Stuck in the school hut. Yeah, so that was my mistake. Yeah. So, episode two. What's it called, Martin? It's called Centuromance. Centur romance. Exactly. More of if an Italian were, yes, thing about yes, it. Yes, yes. There was some love out there on Saturday. There was. There? I mean, yes. A lot yes. of love given and a lot, a lot of love of taken. taken. There was. There and, was. And, and that was quite a dramatic. And a couple of romantic centurions, which yes, we'll come to which later. Which we'll come to presently. There was. Um, I had a bit of trouble with the previous episode subscription button um, when I redid it, and it was huge. So you might find on episode one, which does get trailered during the course of this. So if you uh -huh. missed episode one, yep. you will see it pop up on the top of the screen up here. It will come up, you click on that and watch it and then come back to this one. Um, but yeah, I had a little bit of a problem. So other episodes we do will occasionally pop up. So it will give you the opportunity. And at the end, the previous episode will come up again. So if you've missed anything and we know you'll be absolutely mortified. Oh, if you know, done, yeah. They will do, won't they? Because yep. Um, this is by far and away one of the fastest growing shows on the planet, as they say. It's like those sports, isn't it? When you have a sport, yes. and they'll come on and they'll, they'll, they'll be kicking a triangle around um, a garden or something, yeah. and they'll go on the BBC News and say this is the fastest growing sport in Britain. Yeah. Because there was one playing it, and now there's two. Yes, exactly so that. So doubled the participation, and we've probably done that. We probably... that fi and also that feeling you get of sort of, despair when you you follow something like a series like this is and then you go to catch up and it's not there the previous episode isn't there and that you know that frustration so make sure you don't miss any of the you know yeah. episodes that have preceded this at the moment that's only one of course um just a couple of names on upon reflection we felt we'd probably you know equality and diversity we probably shouldn't have renamed or named certain members as such and well no we just got it wrong we did we just got it wrong. Blake we, we got it wrong. We did, and so we're just going to run through a couple that um, that will be changing as episode as we go forward. These will be the names. So, Blobster Teetail, that legend of the Hobley Cricket Club, will actually be known as. Well, no, he is. He He's is not the legend. Yeah. yeah, we got it wrong. We thought he was Blobster, that, but he is Blizzard. Blizzard. Blizzard Teetail. And there's good reason for that. Of course. Of course. Um, who else have we here, Martin? We have uh, Shimon Shagwell. Ah, yes. Now, you called him Simone, yes. which is obviously a girl's uh, exactly name. Exactly that. And, and it's Shimon. He's yeah. not Jewish. No, no, that's not fair like enough. Not like Shimon Perez, the former Prime Minister of Israel. Oh, yes, I remember him, yeah. Um, but um, uh, this is Shimon Shagwell, who is uh, definitely not Jewish. Um, you got another one for us? Yes, I have. Another tea towel, funny enough. Uh, originally a Zorro tea towel, but he's actually going to be Zorro. Oh, he is Zorro. He is Zorro. No, you keep saying the flashing it, it? blade. Yes, he is. He does he is. flash his blade. He does. Though, he, does. He? he does. He does. Yeah, and that's and, why and we've it, called him such. He is. He is. And you seem to have a problem with yes, the guy. Yes, I did. I know who you mean. Our dear friend Tim Puddling Thing. Puddling Thing. Yeah, because yeah. I keep Puddlington Thing. Yeah, you do. And, and, but it's and, definitely yeah. Tim. I think it's the beard. 
I think that's where it's I'm It's hyphenated. Going. Tim Puddling Thing. Tim Puddling Thing, yes. Yeah, uh, so, so you keep suggesting. Yeah, that's quite, you know, that just puts that in. Yeah. Right, in this packed episode, we'll run through all the weekend's performances, uh, highlighting those uh, teams and individual players that played well, and obviously those that didn't. Uh, we'll also cover some club news on and off the field, and there's plenty of it, and not that we can remember. Uh, no, that's why we have all these little well, sheets yeah, that blow around in the wind. You can see do. that because that's just an aid memoir, as we it like is. to say. So, I suggest you were here and you talk about the first team. Quite a dramatic match, to say the least. This was a very impressive performance by Hobley Crew Club. I think we can quite clearly say that outright there and then. It was a game of, um, to quote one of those old-fashioned public houses, the three tons. Um, oh, yes. yes, you see where I've got that? Yeah. Um, first of all, obviously, Wobblington, their ton maker. Is produced, that who they were playing? Wobblington, yes. Sorry, yes. Wobblington, yes. Uh, one of their battle-hardened guys cracked an impressive 121. And uh, they posted... Well, from that position, I honestly thought here they were going to get a lot more, but they actually posted 261, which probably wasn't as much as I thought, and I'm sure the, the Hobbly guys were very pleased with that. But having said that, having been put into bat, Hobbly then proceeded to um, not make the best of starts. Barotto Blaster was dismissed for the big whap. Wow, about third ball. Getting him straight into the Hall of Scythes. Exactly, first man into the Hall of Scythes. Yes. Followed not long after by Colin Marin, Flash Smart, and of course Jiz Devoid. They all fell very quickly, and at sort of 80 odd for four, it wasn't looking that likely a win. But then, of course, you know who? That gentleman I'm having a little bit of a problem with, Tim Tom, Tim, Puddling Thing and our very own Magic Dude. Now, we had spoken to Magic before he'd gone out on the pitch. And yes, we had. We mentioned to him that his uh, form of late had been not great, and I think we mentioned it in the first episode. Uh, he knew that, and but by his very nature and his name... He's only gone and conjured up a little something. He's pulled out his magic wand <laughs> and cast a very heavy Ooh, spell yes. on the Wobblington bowlers, and proceeded to dispatch them around the small ground, over the fence. Oh, um, I think it was Tim Puddling Thing who almost took out um, Mrs. Ooh. Tiles on the uh, oh, yes, balcony. That. that was very close. Was, was... A full-blown six penneth straight onto the roof slates, which almost landed on her on the balcony. So that said, these guys, Tim... <laughs> Tim Puddling Thing and the Magic Dude both became Centurions and m almost coasted home. They a did, comfortable uh, win, they coasted did. home. Which uh, obviously gives us the title, if you haven't already guessed, the Centuromancer. Centuro yeah, we like that, so don't we? We certainly do. But yeah, I mean, just back to the Magic Dude, not only, he didn't just finish there, did he? He actually turned his arm over to good effect. Well, he had earlier in the game. Yes, yes, that was earlier on. And we haven't seen him do that since indoor cricket, have we? No. You know, he doesn't often come on and do such things. But yeah, he turned his arm over to good effect with a good three for. So he did. Three the first for team were very impressive. I have to say, that's as impressed as I've been with the Hobbly first team for some considerable time. We have a now very special report from my very own birdie who, during the course of Saturday's game, in the heat wave that it was, plus 30 degrees, took us down to the infamous Spanish Quarter and reported from there. Mm. And that was warm. Hi, I'm Birdie. Today we find ourselves in the infamous Spanish Quarter of the Hobley Cricket Club and I'm warm and when I say warm I mean warm. This area is like its own little inhospitable microclimate. The searing heat in this area is all to do 
with angles and the brickwork. Just look at this glorious brickwork, and if you put your hand on it, it's retaining heat, just like you used to get in the old storage heaters of the old days. And only the hardiest of supporters come down here. This is not a place for the faint-hearted. Okay, so let's have a little bit more of an in-depth look at what's going on. If I was to place my hand on there, that is, you know, almost you can't hold it on here that hot. That is that hot on there. The term, the Spanish Quarter, infamous because of the glorious terracotta colours. The sort of thing you'd find anywhere in a Spanish city or, in fact, a Spanish Quarter elsewhere. Today, we were also treated to some rather pleasant Spanish music at the same time, which can be heard emanating from here on the odd occasion. And of course, with every warm socialising area, area, you always need one of these, the obligatory barbecue. And uh, we have put that to good use, if you don't mind me saying earlier, with a couple of nice sausages and a couple of nice spicy kebabs. So, in conclusion, this isn't an area for the faint-hearted. This is an area for your genuine sun worshippers. And that obviously isn't me due to my pasty persona. So I'm going back under the parasol and get myself out of this heat. So, uh, it seems there's not actually a lot that can be said about the second elephant trip to Appleton. I think it's actually Appleton-on-Sea. Oh, Appleton-on-Sea. It's like yes. Wormington-on-Sea, but yes. it's Appleton-on-Sea. Um, the hosts, the home side, has set a uh, daunting total of 315 in their 45 overs. Fortunately, some um, bowlers took a rather bit of a hammering, uh, such as Shimon Sag Shagwell, who oh did tell me he just... He had to be the one to bowl the middle overs, but unfortunately he went for several runs. Yes, uh, I think North for 83 off his 12 overs. Really? Uh, oh, yes. Yes. Um, the batsman, come part time bowler, Noddy Apple, though, did pick up three wickets later on. Three for 64 off his eight. A little expensive going running at eight and over, but, you know, it wasn't too bad. Bloke Umbridge. Ah, yes. Now we haven't seen his we uh, haven't seen... name flashing across the scorecard no. with a bat, at no, least we anyway. He normally takes a few wickets, but um, he managed to score a half century. It's probably yes. the first half century he scored uh, for a, a good season or two. And uh, he was the only notable um, score within the side. in the whole side as such. Wasn't he it? was. He scored 52 out of a whole total of 100. 100. They 100. rolled 215 runs short. Now that doesn't tell the whole story because making his return to ah, the team, yeah. Midge, Midge who, who yes. bold average. I mean, we've got figures of one for 69 off nine overs, which isn't great. I've got to be honest with you. From we talked about his banana in swingers, but you know they obviously didn't yes, have a great effect. they weren't effect. having a great effect. He had a third ball duck when out batting, ah, and so isn't available he, this week. He will also find himself in the Hall of Size. He's in the Hall of Size, but he's not the only one because there were four others. Oh, four, four others other batsmen within, entering such and, rounds. And we might as well actually say we might who as they well were. Just we have name and shame them Blaze here. Blaze Tea Towel, yes. Noddy Apple, Mitch Hu, Clint, Clint Westwood, Westwood, Joe Track, and not out was Tip Andron. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I like oh, that. Yeah, see. I like that. Yeah, well, Dang. we like positivity. Yeah, we do. We? we do like positivity. We don't do negativity here in the score hut, even though we're stuck in here no. all season. Um, we're moving on to the ladies. Ladies, aren't we? of course like we are. Ladies? Yes, I'd like to talk well, I've about that. You've already been asked if you wanted to do the ladies. Yeah, of this course, evening. yes, you have. Yes, um, the ladies found themselves away. Pipsqueak and West Fuddock, um, and put in a good performance. One by 56 runs. Um, the highlight of the evening being a retire, oh, retired, not out, 30, from Henrietta Harriet. Uh, is, daughter, yeah, daughter. Is she of, a veterinarian? Daughter of the local veterinarian. Oh. So that was very impressive. So that was good. Henrietta I like to, Harriet? Henrietta Harriet. 
she then pretty. obviously produced a quite an impressive spell of bowling also. Yes. A spell of four overs for one wicket, an economy of 2.25 again. A very good all-round performance. And that is impressive. That is impressive. We yep. like impressive stats. We, we do. We're a bit... We're stacked. We are. Stacked. We're stacked. stacked. Tastic. We are stacked up with stats. Stacktastic. We like anything like that. The under 19. We have a T20 under 19 side. Yes. We have an adult one and an, and an under 19 side. And they were playing. Let's see. I don't even know where they were playing. Oh, oh they were playing yes. Sunbury. Sunbury. Down the Sunbury, road. Sunbury, yes. Just one of our road. local it's rivals. Yes, it was. A local rivals. And... Um, Colin Marin opened the batting. He's, he's getting used to that now, isn't he? He is, yeah. And he scored 40, but I did note on his scorecard, he actually scored three of the big ones. So oh, it did must he? have been a. Well, it is. Sunbury yeah. has a particular. To be short fair, boundary, if I was it? to be brutally honest, in all my cricket career, I scored, I think, one or two sixes, one of which was at Sunbury, Sunbury. of course, because it is a rather picturesque, miniature ground, one would say. So, yes, but that, nonetheless, 40 runs, good effort. And Donnie, of course, Donny Shunt, Shunt scored a half century. Again, he would have had to retire, yep. as you can see, at a strike rate of 132. And he put a couple over the line as well, which is always good to see. They bowled Sunbury out for 107, just short of the 20 over mark. So, it's obviously a bit of a struggle for some of the boys in the opposition. But according to this, Clint Rockpool ah, managed yes. to get two for 20 in three overs. Together with. Together Martin with Cromwell. Martin Cromwell, who bagged two wickets in one for, over, in one over for the loss of no runs, no runs, no runs at all, which is pretty impressive because he doesn't play cricket really. I would say all round as a Hobley Cricket Weekend, that's been quite an impressive weekend. It for is the other cricket than the uh, the second, other than 11, the second, who yes, seemingly who... seem to want to let us down on a regular basis. <laughs> we have a special. Um, part of the program called the Hall of Scythes. Ah, we do, don't we? Yes. Now the Hall of Scythes is for anybody who scored a duck during the previous week or weeks, depending on how long our episodes take to bring out into production, and they are put on a list. Now we need to we need to pick out three because uh, there's a Twitter link which is going to come up as soon as I mention the three, which you are going to have to go on, find, and vote, and the winner will be announced in our next episode. So, just for the fact that he's the overseas, yes, and he lasted three balls it in was the first a team three game. ball, yeah. Exactly he that. definitely has to go in I as one of our Hall of Scythes residents for this week. The other one, I, another one I would like to put in for his commendable return to the second <sighs> eleven, and also failing or falling, shall I say, to a third ball duck, will be Midge Who. Midge Who. So we now need to find the final one, the final jigsaw, and I think I found who it is. So it's goodbye. Goodbye from, from us. From me and from you. Yes, you and from, say goodbye? yes, goodbye from me also. So and goodbye, we'll, everybody. We'll be back. Bye bye now. In another and time. Rest in peace, Brian Kent. <laughs> yes, Brian Kent. Play, play away, away, play, play away, away, play away, play, play, play West away, and, um, play, play away. Play away. And hump you. <laughs> if, um, do not forget to subscribe. That's the one just under just his little finger there. Do not forget that. Get your finger I had a bit out of trouble and start. With the, uh...